the Total Utter Bollocks Podcast, presented by your hosts, the Havana Gentlemen, otherwise known as Jack and George. So, George, that oh, yes. was the jingle for Total Utter Bollocks. Oh, that's nice. Uh, we're back again. How are we doing? <laughs> Every episode? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> when really inside, you're dying. I'm dying inside. I mean, he's not actually dying, just mentally. <sighs> <laughs> no, not really. So, I'm very happy. Well, very good. Me too. Apart from, and this is going to go into the first segment of today's episode, how's your week been, George? Oh, it's been another fun one. <laughs> Better than being... By the way, did you get your money back after being robbed last week? No, I did, yes. All £130 of it. Literally two days later, I was oh, this is brilliant. Really? I was very happy. So you had it back before the episode even went live. So I noticed a few people were actually concerned and commented, <laughs> did you get your money back? Yeah, no, no, it was, it was, it was all good. I was very happy. Oh, brilliant! I was pleasantly surprised. That I just couldn't believe it that I actually got it back. <laughs> I couldn't. I, I thought <laughs> ah, shit, it's lost. Forget it. I, I thought you would have been back. angrier, especially how you know. Yeah, you know, I think it was the fraud people. They were so nice and they were so just oh, lovely. Well, they got a lot of time on their hands, just sat watching the phone ring. Yeah, for well, 10 yeah, minutes. they sat around all day, so they should be bloody nice. Whose day is it today? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, let's have a game of Twister just to sort it out. They're, they're doing like a, a, you know, pull your name out of a hat, but they're like, oh no, not that person. <laughs> it's a very deep hat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. I... Pardon me. I had to blow my nose. That's awful. All that horrible noise. <laughs> Sorry. It's not like me to make much noise. No. For goodness sake. Can you... Because ah! that is what <laughs> everyone wants to hear. But anyway, about my week... Yes, go on with your week. Uh, so, yesterday, which was the Thursday... It was? I, had the, I booked the day off because I was having my boiler service. And I thought, oh, I'll take my car to the garage to get MOT'd as well. So I have a really productive day. A really productive day. I wait all the and and this is another thing, right? I'm with Brit- <laughs> I'm, 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 with, on the first thing. I'm with British Gas, yeah, and I thought they've been all right. So I did. I've signed up to this cover thing that they do. They do different types of cover, and I thought, oh, it's like insurance, basically. And I thought, oh, I'll book a service. Yeah, do you know the time window they give you: twelve midday till six. Tw- <laughs> a whole six hours. Could you be any more vague? Like, yeah, we're, like, co- we're coming in at some point today. It'd be so much handier if they just gave you a time and said, oh, could I just pop off quickly home just to sort out the boiler man and then I'll come back. But no, 12 till 6, so I booked the day off because at half four, at half four, because I hadn't done anything all day <laughs> and I wanted to walk Barney. And I thought, fuck it, I'll just go walk Barney and if he turns up, I'll just go, oh, I'll be five minutes. Half four, I miss a call on my phone. I open the voicemail. It's like, hi, it's whoever the fuck his stupid name was. Hi, it's Ingy from British Gas. Your engineer couldn't get to your house today, so unfortunately we have to cancel your service. <laughs> what? And then, and then the next bit... We're out next, with Barney at this point. Yeah, I'm out with Barney. And then it's like, and the next available date is the 5th of April. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> That's that's too much. I swear away. to God, if I picked up that phone, I bet he just called it and it just uh, uh, knob. But if I picked up that phone, I'd be like, "Are you fucking serious?" I I'd be so angry over the phone. What a knob? Was that one of them where you're waiting in all day? And thought, "Wow, oh, quick ten minutes, I'll be all right." And that fucker goes in that ten minutes. He arrives. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but oh no no sorry he can't come do your boiler today oh, oh brilliant and then to top it all off my car failed its MOT <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me please don't tell me so every time that George drives us anywhere because George very very nicely of him gave us a lift for my partner's birthday at the weekend professional and driver of course she's quite nervous in cars sometimes 
not so much. I mean, I used to have an old Lexus, and that thing was a bag of nails, and she used to not be quite like she'd go in it, but be a bit uneasy. Hmm. And we got back from that night, and and it, it is quite funny because you know I, I've always loved being in George's car. He plays the best music; it's great. Always. But every time his car starts, it's a bit like Uncle Buck. When the car starts, you hear the <laughs> and all of a sudden it's oh bang! Like <laughs> and see, I know this because for the past, how long have you had that car? Five, six years? Five years. For five years. So for for about four and three quarter years, George has been saying to me when he starts the car up and it goes boom. It's meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, uh, honestly, it hasn't it hasn't been that bad for ages. Like it did it here and there every now and then, but recently it's got a lot worse. <laughs> so a lot more often. You did sort it out, and then it came back. But it wasn't like a bad. It wasn't like a real fatal thing, was it? It was just an annoyance. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what it, did the Garrett tell it, you it was? But but it is something that will eventually wear away. Like because what it what it does? What I found this out. What it, when it starts up, the exhaust hits the subframe. I was like, ah, okay. So it's not that big a problem, but it can be fixed somehow. So when I go for a service next time, I will say, hello, fix it, please. (laughs) Don't be alarmed. There are no firearms in this vehicle, I assure you. It's just the exhaust. But But, I'm saying, when we were kids, I remember talking and being like, I'd love to have a car like Uncle Buck's, where it just goes, bang! I know, it'd be brilliant. What a car to have. (laughs) Make everyone absolutely crap their pants. Every great. time you start your car up. <laughs> but it was just quite funny. And when, when we got back, Rosie said, well, that was a eventful drive in the uh, in the death machine. <laughs> the death machine. It's actually... Oh, that's a bit far. I mean, it was, I thought it was all right. It, you know what? My car is actually a fairly well-maintained car. It's just the banging. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only thing. And just I, to again, clarify, that's not the... His car is a banging magnet. He didn't do much banging in it. <laughs> she purely means the exhaust. <laughs> but it did. But the MOT didn't fail on the exhaust. The exhaust is just a problem. They're like, okay, we'll accept it. But it didn't fail it for that. Was it, it even failed. an advisory? No. Oh, that's, that's all right. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the uh, can't remember what they're called now. The roll bar thing, the linkage. One was seriously deteriorated, and one was broken. <laughs> so I was like, oh, right. that's, I was like, oh, that's what oh, that clunking noise was. Because <laughs> <laughs> so many noises, I'm trying to identify them all. Because because I I knew something was wrong with the suspension, and I thought it was that or something else. And she said, "Oh yeah, it's that." Like, oh, lovely, two hundred pounds of my hard-earned money. I thought it'd be worse than that, actually. It's not too. Yeah, bad. no, it's not too bad, but it's not expensive parts. And it was just the MOT. Yeah, but yeah, no. Other than that, it's been a perfectly fine week. So a bit of an annoying day, though. Oh, honestly, it all came at once. It was awful. No, no, cause, <laughs> what did cause... you get wrong to say about your MOT failing? No, no, because I found out about my uh, um, my boiler, my gas man. The gas man! <laughs> and then... Um... Gas man! Gas man! Gas man! <laughs> and then I saw I had a missed call from the garage, so I thought, oh, this could be good. <laughs> Just after that, so I was a bit annoyed, and then she said... Oh, unfortunately, it's fair. Like, ah, okay. Well, I'm not surprised, but it's just annoying. <laughs> George, you know what you should have done? What? You should have hid in the bushes, right, for this gas man to arrive. And as he did, <laughs> and as he started, like, he quickly rung you and hung up instantly. Yeah, not in. I've tried. There's nothing I can do. Didn't even knock on the door. I yeah. just drove away straight away. You should have stood at your drive, like, popped out, and then just shouted, Hello, Mr. Gas Man! <laughs> as he's going down the road. <laughs> he's driving away and I'm just there floating by his window and I'm like excuse me Mr. Gas Man <laughs> Mr. Gas Man <laughs> with my frying pan in hand <laughs> anyone who's never no. watched Bottom watch it and you'll get the reference it's fantastic oh, yeah but anyway how was your week just just, just <laughs> don't just don't just don't even go there <laughs> no it was alright but if I just remind myself as to what... Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. And then you look what you've heard. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> now, you know me. Do I? Who are you? Um, it's Jack. Nice to meet you. Oh, hello. Pleasure. <laughs> um, you know what I'm like. And if one thing goes wrong, I'm like... <laughs> That's it. Oh, 
It's all going to kick off now, right? <laughs> so I think Rosie might have been getting her nails done or something, and I took her to bath. Yeah. She parked up and thought, I'll have a wander around. And I thought, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go to Havana House. Wait, have oh, I yeah. told this Have I told this story before? I don't think so. I don't know it. About the gift card? I don't think so. You sure? I can't remember. Oh, I'll just tell the bloody story. Well, I thought well, I'll, pop, I'll pop down and see Elisa. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah. This podcast is going to be a lot of us repeating the same stuff because we can't <laughs> remember what we said last time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so I go to see Elisa, all right, as I do. Yes. And I thought, I'll tell you what, you do. I've got a gift card for Paul Potts Chocolate Shop. So I thought, right, I'll go and use that. <laughs> right? Is that Paul Potts the singer? It was something like that. Something like that. <laughs> I thought, I'll go in and he's whisking up a load of hot chocolates going, yes, I'm done. <laughs> But something Potts Chocolate Shop and thought, right, you know, I got that, you know, a while ago. Thought, oh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll get myself a, a, a hot chocolate and try it. It's like 30 quid's worth. I thought, fucking I'll get loads. And I thought, I'll get her one as well. She'll like that. So I pop in, see what she wants. She didn't want anything. But I, I just said, I'm going to go and get mine now. I'm queuing up. Yeah. I'm queuing queue up. up. Queuing up. I get to the front. You get to the front. Sorry, your <laughs> gift card's expired. Infuriated. Because now this is what annoys me. It's not it's not the woman who did that. Fair enough, it's expired. I'll take that. What annoys me is the concept of gift cards. I like the idea that, you know, you can give people something of monetary value, of money, rather than <laughs> something they're not going to use and they can spend it. But why the fuck? Because this pisses me off. Why the fuck? Do you give somebody money with a time limit <laughs> when you could just simply give them money just walking <laughs> to your nearest fucking cash point? Yeah, that is um, odd. Uh, I don't really know why gift cards are a thing. I, I, right, this is because you... That's right. it. Some Muppet came up with the idea. If I think, right, George loves m and I'll tell you what, I'll get him an m and <laughs> gift voucher. I've got to get in my fucking car, right, which I pay tax on every year, and I pay for the fuel. I've got to drive into Bath. If I'm there for an hour, which I'm usually not, I've got to pay £3.50 to park the fucker. I've got to get out, physical labour, walk into m and <laughs> buy That's George the, the £30 pound gift card, which has, by the way, a year's fucking time limit on it, which he's probably going to forget about and not even use. I've got to go back to the car, more fuel, drive it home. Then I've got to write his day, want everything. Why not just, oh God, I've got a Tesco cash point two minutes away from me. Walk two minutes, get him 30 quid out, come back, card, pound fifty, bish, bash, bosh, done. With no time limit. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> you know, it's like they're, they're making up the idea for the. All right, so all right, we're going to make a little plastic card, and that's worth ten pounds. Or How much do you pay for it? You, you pay seven pound fifty or something just so you get the value. You know, so it makes it feel like. And then I was like, but what could we do to make it better? Oh God, I've come. Oh, I know. Oh, come what's that? What's I was going to say you could put a little logo, put a bit of a design on it, so it looks like a card. Oh fits yeah. in your wallet. Maybe. Uh, so oh, you know, actually, I've got a better idea. What we'll do is we'll put a time limit on it so it makes people, oh, God, I've got to use it. Yes. And people I like definitely, that. people I like will that. never forget that they've got them. It will never happen. Ah, but I found a flaw in that, George. What's that? I know they might, it might make them want to spend more quicker, but the money's already been spent because they bought the gift card. So really, it's just causing an inconvenience for the person they're buying them for. That's not my problem. You're a genius. And that's, that's not... how it was made. That's how it was made. Fuck them. It's like, not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a business, it's genius. Because they're spending money, what could essentially be if they forget, for nothing. It's yeah. genius. But for people who buy them, I don't understand. Or is it just me? Am I mad? I could be mad. Tell me if I'm mad. You're probably mad. I'm probably mad. Let's forget it. But for me, I fucking hate gift cards. I hate them. I hate them, George. I hate them. <laughs> Sorry, I've gone a bit off the rail there. But these things really do, you know, they really do set me off. I'm sure they do. Sorry I about know that. they do. It's okay. It's all right. Take a deep breath. <sighs> and there was another thing. Was there? So, you, do, you used to shop in Aldi, didn't you? Uh, yes. But you now shop in Asda. And then Lidl. Then Lidl. And now Asda. I'm on the Lidl phase, okay? Oh, Lidl's brilliant, though. 
Lidl is brilliant. I, I was there earlier. I love it. Right. But this is something that has irritated me. And do you know what? It's not the fault of anyone involved, right? It's just the system just that annoys me in this. So I walk into Lidl, start of this week, uh, and I was buying a few things, doing a bit of the weekly shop. Oh, we like to get our vegetables in there because it's good for that. Um, and I and I just saw in the discount, oh, there was some razors. And I thought, ah, oh, you know, I need one, I'll get one. So I get this razor. Anyways, I have the girl <laughs> on the counter who says, oh, can I see your ID? And I thought, right, I'm, bear in mind, I'm wearing brown brogues, a pair of denim jeans, a check shirt with a tweed jacket. Not many 16-year-olds wear that, but I let it slide. Well, Can I see your ID? Yeah, okay. And I got it out. She said, oh, I've heard your voice now. Yeah, I could tell you. And then she said, oh, oh, you're much older than I thought. So I thought nothing of it. Left. Then I came back today, and I bought what I'm drinking right now. I bought a pack of four Magnus. I got a load of other stuff as well, because I have to get some food for tea tonight. And I got a pack of four Magnus Dark Fruits. Same girl there. So I thought, oh, that's all right. I could put my wallet well to get my card out. She'll remember. Because I'm wearing the same tweed jacket, check shirt, and brown brogues. Which, again, not many 16-year-olds tend to wear. No. So, um, so I said, hello, all right. Yeah, yeah, you. Um, oh, can I see your ID, can please? I, I said, please. you got it. Um, this is the second time you've done that this week? I was, oh, oh yeah, oh, so it is. I said, do you get many people wearing tweed jackets in, in, in here or <laughs> and Tom Brogues and, you know, that look <laughs> underage? And, uh, not in a nasty way, just joking, because I, I was like, fair play, you're doing your job, you know, that doesn't bother me. But I'll tell you what, just <laughs> sometimes. It's the shit inconvenience of it all. <laughs> it's inconvenient, because, and it's just, I mean, I've had some stupid IDs. I had someone here, I shit you not, right? I had someone here a couple of weeks ago. In your house? Uh, well, at the front door. <laughs> they knocked on the front door, an Amazon Prime delivery person. I think it was a bottle of wine that was ordered or something like along those lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like a present. And he knocked on the door and he said, um, oh, can I speak to the um, Mr. Jack Manor in the, the homeowner, please? Uh, is he the homeowner? Yeah, yeah, speaking. He said, ah, um, I've got a bottle of wine here, I think it is. Can I see your ID? I was like, so you want to talk to the homeowner? I've said I'm here. And and you you want to see my ID? Yeah. I don't know where you come from. <laughs> There's not many fifteen year olds <laughs> that, that own a house, <laughs> living Funny in the property, enough. moaning about the light bill, still doing their their, their sats. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a silly thing. And why does it matter to them? You've oh, put it online. I know, they're coming to your door. I mean, apart, I just feel like a bit insulted. But like, you're at my door. What, like, what are you going to do if I say no? Fuck off! Like, oh well, I'll just. I guess I'll just leave this here then. Yeah, I'll do. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe. Oh, uh, oh, I, I'll take it back with me then. All right then. It's odd that you could buy alcohol <laughs> online and not tomorrow. <laughs> it's just stupid. The whole uh, stupid. What sure, stupid I'll tell process. You what, as an adult, I've bought because you know my mum. She's got those brass door num- on numbers on the front of the door. Yeah. I shit you not. I've gone to buy a pot of brasso. You know the other stuff you used to buff out bronze, that sort of thing. Yes. I bought a pot of Brasso and I've been ID'd for it. What now, I ID'd for the. I can, oh, I got ID'd for something the other day. I can't remember what it was now, but it just made me laugh because I look, I look older than you. I look about late twenties. Yeah, but you've, you've got pubes on your face. Exactly, but I just look <laughs> a bit older. And oh, what was it? It just made me chuckle because, like, I was like, "What?" <laughs> Okay. Well, that's why oh, I was chuckling. That, that's what it was. I was in Morrison's and I went, I was, I was at work and I popped to Morrison's to get something for my lunch as a treat. And um, Brian, who works at our place, he's got one of those vape pens, but he's got the ones where you change out the capsules in them. Right. Because he's like 65 and just goes for the most basic of things. And um, I got there, I asked for him and he said, oh, could I see your ID, please? I was like, I, I was just in shock for like two seconds. I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, 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 I had to get my wallet out. I was just, I've never, what? <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. Though I am stood there. And I'm like, I just confused by the fact that this woman who sees me with my, some form of a beard and just old tired face. <laughs> I guess. 
haggard face and she's just like, oh, could I see your ID, please? But it's like the, those two seconds where you stop and think, they do last a while because that when I was buying that Brasso, I was about 21, right? Yeah. And I'm stood there in some fucking hardware shop with a pot of Brasso thinking like, so they obviously asked to confirm for a reason. And I'm thinking, what reason is that for a pot of Brasso? You can imagine some 15-year-old kid, I got away with buying it. Let's go and shine up the neighbor's door numbers, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> they look good. Tidy as shit when I'm finished with them. And then pop a wheelie and off on my scooter! <laughs> off on my scooter! <laughs> and I'm just... Sorry, what? I mean, I, maybe, you, yeah, you can, but... I don't know, maybe that's what, something what in it that's you? not very nice. This silly. What silly world we live in. And then, but yeah, but then again, if you're a 15 year old going around eating a pot of brasso, then so that's annoying. natural selection, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, you're, you're asking for it, aren't you? You're <laughs> exactly. asking for it. <laughs> there shouldn't be a rule. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But that was just something. I mean, I mean, it's not really a bad It's It's a very small inconvenience, but, but, but it was just but funny. Since that ID, I haven't been ID'd, and before that, it'd been years since I'd been ID'd. Really? But it probably won't happen again. I get it maybe a couple of yeah, times a year. But you look like a child. I know. You're like, grow up. But again, in a tweed jacket, check shirt, jeans, just... and brown brogues, and I'm going to hop on my skateboard, <laughs> do a kickflip down the stairs. Got him, lads! <laughs> You're going to go off, in your, off, off on your scooter that has the two wheels at the front. <laughs> and, the one, and, it's like, and as you're going along, it's <laughs> they the light up. Going, <laughs> whip the brogues off, throw them away. On go my light up trainers. <laughs> let's go, boys. Let's have a shave on the one hair I've got on my chin. <laughs> <laughs> Grove Street yeah. kids. Yeah, sort of that. <laughs> and it just sort of makes you think, doesn't it? Just well, I'd love to know why. <laughs> I don't get it. Anyway, anyway, funny world. Funny well, world. so yeah, pretty decent week, really. Yeah, it's been all right. <laughs> it's been fine. I like how we moan about the tiniest things, and we give the most long-winded backstories. But the smallest things in life are the most annoying. I know. Like whipping it's... a card out of a wallet. It's fucking abysmal. It's just annoying. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> hassle. Ladies and gentlemen... Boys and girls and all you bastards present, please remain seated at all times. Keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle and prepare yourselves for Georgie's Fun Facts. i got 52 facts, so you better buckle in, sunshine. <laughs> I am getting buckled. And George, the... what, what was that the noise of you just heard? The jingle? He's got it. That was a jingle. <laughs> what a guess. I was hoping I really wasn't wrong then. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. You were just sweating like when you have to pay for something. <laughs> <laughs> jingle. <laughs> yeah, no, I got 52, surprisingly, but true sex facts. So you better buckle up, sunshine. You oh better A sex fact? That's different. You better put the armrest into the safety position. You better... Um, um, uh, keep your hands and feet inside everything at all yep. times. Yep. Thank you. Are you ready? Yep. You do realize it says that in your jingle. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> right, George, I reckon. Give us a handful. Come on. Go on, lay them on me. I want to see something interesting. All right. A, f- a funny one is the average man has 11 erections per day and nine erections a night. Now, I'm not being funny. But I do not get 11 erections throughout the day. Don't you? No. But I'm not the average man. (laughs) This is the guy who in episode one, (laughs) one, admitted and was proud of and confirmed that he had had 10 masturbation sessions in one day. Yeah, Captain Ten Wanks. So you find it mad that how many was it in the daytime? 11 erections per day. So one more erection after all that. You find that bad? <laughs> I, I just don't think... Maybe I just don't pay attention to it. I think it's probably you just don't pay attention to it, do you? To be fair, I don't. I wouldn't have guessed that for myself. I really wouldn't. No. And the night, really? I mean, I get, like, it probably might, it must happen a couple of times, but nine? <laughs> That's quite a lot, isn't it? That's more it than is. one an hour. 
Easily. Yeah, it is. It's true. It's odd, isn't it? It's such an odd little fact. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what makes it funny? <laughs> There's these people. Obviously, you can't record it when you're sleeping. So there's just someone. I just imagine there's just someone just led right, just sat perfectly aligned with someone's crotch, and they're just at they're at cover level, they're at penis level, waiting to see some movement, and then it just goes up. Oh, yep, yeah, that's one. And they've got the little clicker in hand. Yep, yeah, that's two. I think there's a team of them in white lab coats. Just <laughs> yes, we're getting a risal from the crotch area, and it's up, up, and it's away. That's number one. Click, click. <laughs> and you got Margaret in her white lab coat who's doing something on the laptop there that's just hooked up to the penis <laughs> yeah, yeah. just vigorously vigorously typing away just some bollocks <laughs> there's radios yes the altitude has risen to 0.2 meters 0.2 0.2 meters ladies and gentlemen <laughs> they got like a temperature gauge a uh, 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 thingy for measuring how humid it is <laughs> You know, they need to know how much wind is in, is in the room, which direction it's coming from, what's the wind speed and whatnot, just to get the most accurate of a... Uh... It sounds like one of those things you have on top of houses that are like compasses that spin around in the wind. <laughs> Basically that. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's good. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> a teaspoon of semen contains five calories. So I imagine a team of people in white lab coats, right? <laughs> With a teaspoon. <laughs> uh, how, do you, how do you measure how many calories is a semen? Well, um... Do they burn it? I think they burn it, don't they? I don't... How would you know that? I I don't know. I mean, how would you just, just well, guess? I mean, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I wonder how they would test how it has five calories in it. Good um... diet, though. Good diet. It would be a good. Maybe, maybe that's how. <laughs> drink in semen by the gallon. <laughs> it's like bear grills. Oh, I'm slightly parched. Better drink my own piss. <laughs> better, better, better suck on my cock and get some semen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And it's just like, come on, bear. Let's let's go back to the go back to the hospital. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. I need to do this. I need to suck my cock. <laughs> He's like Popeye with spinach. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> fucking puppy power. Oh, yeah. Of course it is. I can't remember the thing for... Uh... I think Popeye's is... Diddly diddly do. Did... Is it? No. I no, it's no. I feel, I feel like I want to search this up. Do you want, g- treat us. Give us another one. I'm liking this. Keep going. I'll, I'll give you another one. Um... <laughs> um, there's there's a lot on here, mind. Who's writing all this? Like, imagine <laughs> what the guy looks like who who has this website. I... <laughs> Fifty two fun free sex facts. Some virgin. <laughs> it's just <laughs> someone like, who's so far away from ever having sex. He's just never been near anything uh, regarding a vagina. Or a penis. The aroma of wine can arouse, bo- arou- arouse, arouse both men and women. The scents of many wine, wines are believed to replicate human pheromones, the chemical substances that cause behavioural responses in humans. So basically, if you want to... Oh, you're a lovely lady. Just open a bottle of wine and just splash it in her face. Really? Yeah, yeah, and then that will just straight away just the juices will flow. Wow. And she'll just she'll just pounce on you. I think that's what this is saying. I'm pretty sure. Red or white wine? Uh wine. <laughs> wine. I'll tell you what, I'm glad that we always used to do whiskey reviews that we never I, do wine. I bet it, I bet it's red wine. I'm sure they won't mind it being chucked on me. It's not like it stains anything or anything like that. No, no, it's not that that bad. So I'm sure as opposed to being like, you know, oh, take me now. It'll be a bit like, my fucking sofa! (laughs) (laughs) I bet you want a bit now. (laughs) And that's the story of how I got my bollocks cut off. (laughs) And that's how I became a eunuch. (laughs) (laughs) Diddly doodly do do. I need to find that sound effect put in this in the in the show. 
you want? Do you want one more fact? Go on, kill it. Off. For fun. Go on. One more. Right, just for so, an hour. Is it a funny one? <laughs> it's a, a a wow one. Um, a, a porn star known as Lisa Sparks, whoever she be. Oh yeah, I mean, oh who's that? <laughs> Had intercourse with 919 men in 24 hours, setting a new world record. That is hell. Be mental. I bet there's no. I bet there's 919 men were quite happy with it though. I bet they were. Maybe, maybe not the last few. <laughs> maybe not the last few hundred. That's what I was thinking. The I last the first, 200. I think maybe the first 10 or 20 would be quite happy. And then after that, it's a bit like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but the last 50, just, sorry, am I in? I just, I can't. It's been a draft, but I can't feel much else. <laughs> She's just turned into like the staple of Marshmallow Man. <laughs> <laughs> just covered. Cut me open and I bleed. <laughs> <laughs> bleed. <laughs> My God, that's awful. But you know, like I, I mean, I've heard before. I've got I like what sort of things she did to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> Knock herself out. <laughs> How do you prepare for that? <laughs> it's such a. Oh wow. I well bet, imagine if there was like an application process to be one of the men. I bet the guy who made the website of the facts you're on now is like, oh, yes, I'll put my name down. <laughs> I don't mind if I'm guy number 919. <laughs> it's just it's just mental. I mean, I've nothing against what people do, what they want to do. But I mean, at the end of that, I mean, where is the pride? Yeah, no, I mean, that must not, feel um, pretty bad after that. Yeah, that is, um, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Imagine being the guy that married her. She is married as well. <laughs> I've just looked her up. <laughs> you just searched her up. <laughs> She's married since 1995. Oh, so this is a long time ago. So, Jesus Christ, it was nine years after they got married that she thought, you know what? After? You know what, today? You know, she's been after. married since 1995, and she did this in 2004. <laughs> so she was like, you know what I feel like doing today? <laughs> And her husband, I imagine, was very supportive. No, no, no. He's like, she's like, I'm going to beat a world record today. He's like, oh, that's really good, honey. Oh, what? Well, yeah, I'm going to have a sex, a sex with many men as possible in 24 hours. Oh, um, okay. Well, uh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I imagine the husband was very much <laughs> just you. Okay, love, you do what you want. What an awful. She's 44, so she was uh, minus um, so many years. She was like a, a th- like thirties, early thirties, late twenties. I mean, don't get me wrong; that is very impressive. Whew. I am quite impressed. It's However, a scary. I wonder if it. I wonder what counted. Was it just like man after man, just walking down and just putting it in, and then taking it out, and then off to the next one? It could have been that, to be fair. <laughs> That's still pretty impressive, though, isn't it? That's still quite a bit. Wow. It's just, oh, okay. Uh, she a looker? Yeah. Uh, she's all right. She's nothing yeah, to... Let me have a look. What's her name again? She's nothing to phone home about. Uh, Lisa Sparks. Oh, yeah, I see. Um, what's this 24-hour video she's put up? I wonder what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Now, George. Yes, Jack. I understand that you've got something to tell me about because uh, I'm, you know, I'm I'm a bit behind. Recently, there's been in some uh, new rules enforced in the UK to do with um, road traffic. Yes, and I'd like you to enlighten me because I'm, I I think I get the principle, but I'd like you to just clarify it as I know it's a point of you know you've you've always been all for the idea. Yeah, yeah. About that. About that. So basically, one of them is to do with cyclists and the other is to do with pedestrians. Now, the thing with cyclists, a bunch of annoying, stupid bastards that are on the roads all the bloody time, um, they can now sit in the middle of the road. It's that they have to, well, well. Really? Yeah, they can sit in the middle of the road now. Did not hear that. I've never. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, no, it's a new thing now. And. 
you have to give more space when passing them and stuff, but you always have to give space. But, you but know, when I, I leave as when much I space. Take, I, I give a good three or four meters, a good a, a lot, you know. Yeah, no, it's just like, it's just, yeah, whatever. So, hang on, do, is the person who brought this in, do they hate cyclists or something? No, no, they love them because they're like, oh, no. let's, let's just let them sit in the middle of the road so they can... That's uh, not love. That's not like. That is strong hatred. Because it's going to piss people off more than anything. Well, people, they're going to get fucking hit. Uh, someone's going to have a bad day. You're like, you know what? People are going to die here. Balls to the wall. Death. Ramming speed. And just... <laughs> Destroy them. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, whatever. That one's not as annoying. The next one. That has to be more. No, but my point is, that's got to be more dangerous for. Like, surely cyclists don't want that. Because that's going to be a lot more dangerous. Just don't cycle on the road. Go somewhere else. I don't care where See, you're going to go. But just I, I've recently got off. a bike and I quite enjoy it, but I only stick to scenic routes. I won't want to do it on the. Get a, motor on the, get a, motor get a motorbike. Get I don't want to do it on the road. I know people do, but it's not doesn't interest me. But, I, if I'm on a bike, I'd rather go out and go along hills and see nice sights and all that. But but the even better and more interesting and absolutely more stupendously stupid one, right? Is so. Say you're driving along the road, and you want to go into the next junction on the left. Yeah, you would usually indicate and move on in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now get this: if there is a pedestrian on the uh, you know the suggested walkway you know the dropped curb yeah where the junction is yeah so they 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 want to go across to the other side of the of the road that they want to yeah yeah the car on the road that's turning left has to give way to that person that's surely in the not. junction surely not you have to give way and stop so they can cross the road I think no, I think hang on I, I think I'll ask you to explain because I think I got this wrong so. You're driving down the road, main road, straight ahead, yep. right? Main road. Driving straight ahead, and you want to turn down a complete 90 degree left turn down a junction on the left. Yes, sir. If someone's about to cross over that left thing, going the same direction as you, you've got to stop and wait whilst indicating in the middle of the main road while they cross the road. Yes, whilst they cross the little road that you're turning into. Are you taking the piss? I thought that was... I heard it wrong. No. It's completely true. <laughs> and it's absolutely stupendous because it's going to cause so many accidents. Are you is that actually real? Or are you taking? Yeah, the no, piss? no, no. Honestly, it was on the news, and I, I heard oh, about God. it beforehand. Absolutely stupid. I heard so. I did not hear that. Hang on a minute. New <laughs> road traffic crossing junction rule. But it's absolutely stupid because it's not even a crossing. It's just a suggested updated, crossing. The updated code clarifies that when people are crossing, we need to cross at a junction. Other traffic. Traffic should give way. Yeah, I know, people it's are crossing and traffic wants to turn into the road. People crossing have priority and traffic should give. Well, yeah, obviously when they're walking, you're not just going to ram into them. Yeah, but if they stood, but, but it says if they stood there waiting to go, you should give way to them. It's the main road. It's the road. It's a road that vehicles drive on. You obviously, uh, it's so stupid. It's like it's just stupid. George, it's the road. And I tell you it's what, people. now. I, I ain't giving away to anyone. I just continue on as no bloody normal. But the thing is, though, it's not like if they walk on, like they crash. Oh, that's a bit shit. It costs a bit of money. It's if if they walk and no, someone doesn't know this rule, they're dead. Yeah, I know. It's stupid. Dead. It should be like they should wait. They should look. If there's nothing coming, go. But the thing <laughs> is, this has worked for years. Yeah, it's been well, perfectly fine. It's never not worked. Why has this been brought in? And I think it's always these people that are in government that basically have no job, but they thought, oh, you know what? Do that so it justifies my job. <laughs> well, look what I've done this year. Makes it look like, oh, yeah, actually do it something. <laughs> well, I, I put me town on the map. But another thing, <laughs> I put Sanford on the map. Put Sanford on the map. But another thing is, though, and I found this out, uh, blind people who have dogs, yeah, the dogs are trained when the car goes by. I could be wrong, but this is what I heard. When the car, you know, they know that there's a car there. If the car's sat there waiting for them to cross, the dog's just going to sit there and wait because they've been taught to wait for the car to go by and then they can right. go. Because the, the, the danger isn't clear. 
And like, I know you can train dogs, but dogs that have been doing it for years, uh, they're going to re- it's going to be a massive struggle. Once, once you, do- you, once you've trained a dog, that that's like, you know, you ain't going to change it after years, are you? You put the basic foundation while they're young. Yeah. Well, you can, but it's just uh, extremely hard. It's Imagine just- there being a guy in a suit, right? Who's who's in the government? He says, well, look, you know, recently, Mister So and So, he's updated the Road Traffic Act, and um, you know, you got to reconsider your methods of approach. Now, doing a full-on PowerPoint to a room of dogs. Like <laughs> <laughs> dogs. So, right, listen up here, chaps. <laughs> yeah, all questions at the end, please. <laughs> listen, listen well, and listen good. I'm only going to tell you this bloody once. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have been a good boy, but just stay still and let me finish my presentation. <laughs> it's just, but yeah, no, I thought because it made me so angry. I thought you were joking. I did. I, I thought. I genuinely thought when well, you said it, you'd explained it badly, and I got it wrong. Just, and you know what annoys me that there's not a sort of rule with like if you are a cyclist and there's traffic coming the other way and you're causing such a massive sort of massive congestion you behind you. Over. Which they usually do. Yeah, it does. I any, mean, any reasonable human being would be like, "All right, I'm in the way. I'll just pull over, let them all go by." Like a tractor does. Yeah, a tractor. Yeah, exactly. They they are a prime example because they are in the way, and they're not going to build. Fucking Sometimes lorries do, and they're not even that bad. Yeah, yeah, no, lorries do it all the time, and you know, it's not. There's, they're not going to build cycle lanes everywhere because that'd be stupid. I mean, I, I must admit. Cool. I don't dislike cycling or necessarily cyclists, but because I I get it, it's cyclists. like it's a good way of doing things. I've been to Amsterdam; it works fantastic. It works really well. But it's all right in a city. I'm with you there, I think that there should be a rule about pulling because I've been as, as well as like doing cycling and enjoying. No, I've never done road cycling, but I see the enjoyment. But I've been that guy so many times, sat behind thinking, "Where the fuck's this traffic coming from? This is mayhem!" And it's been because one guy is cycling and it's congested the road. So it's, badly, it's so stupid. And you know what annoys me? And uh, I know they're supposed to. It's when they go in the middle of the road, so on your right side, and they just go, they just go past you because there's traffic. And like, and I don't know what it is. I'm like, <laughs> just like, how dare you get in front of me? How dare you just fly on by past me, you piece of shit? I just want to open the door and smack them. <laughs> just open the door. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I hate cyclists with but a passion. No, but what I don't understand is that rule about them going in the middle of the road and you've got to overtake further. That's not adding safety for them in any way, shape, or form. That's making it more dangerous it's, for them it's, and it's, more dangerous for the overtaker because they've got to go out further. It's basically treating them as a car. Well, it's increasing the chances of injury for both parties. I don't understand that. That if, has confused the hell out of me. If everyone just had jetpacks instead of... Um bicycles there'd be no problems or steam trains or steam trains imagine waking up in the morning and you've got to start up your little train George, I'm not listening a, to this this is a madman's theory it's such a beautiful little noise and you're like oh I'm just gonna go to work you put your little cap on you put your little train driver's cap on <laughs> and if you just stop steaming away happy as could be george george we're not <laughs> going to be having steam trains as cars, okay? Who knows? It hurts. I know it hurts. I Who know knows? Like I the know world. you like it, but George, it's not going to happen. It's uh, just I not. You, I see what steam power is going to come back in a big way. <laughs> Electric trains, believe it or not, are a thing. They're oh. going to stay a thing. I know they're horrible. I know. I'm sorry. Oh. What a horrible cold world we will live in. <laughs> a cold. Oh, the pollution. A, a cold unartistic world we live in. Actually, that's the thing. Modern day architecture is not beautiful in any way. I agree with you. Universities and all that, those have new buildings seen, they make are disgusting. Have you seen that awful um, in Trowbridge? Uh, what are you going to say? The flats? By the, flat, the flats thing that's got the little parking underneath it looks yes. awful. I hate it. I hate it. I hate Peter Pan. I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. <laughs> but I know, I know exactly what you're on about straight away. We, 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 where if we're coming from town by that church, we turn right and we go yeah. past it. Oh, it's horrible, isn't it? It is a yeah. fucking abomination. It's, it's awful. It's just like how they build universities now, like the campuses. It's yeah. just so nasty. It just, There's no design at all. 
like there's loads of beautiful old stuff all around the country and Bath and whatnot. And you look at it and you're like, you look at all these beautiful little details that they've put in there. It's not just Absolutely. a flat wall. They've decided to like do some bits in it and just curly bits and beautiful. And they're like, what, what, what a lovely way to think, oh, you know what? Hmm. That's how we'll make it. Cottages. Nowadays. Look beautiful. Nowadays, just slap a wall up and happy days. We're off. Or put some random patches of colour just here and there, and it'll look like it's a sort of design, I suppose. It's Fuck it. Just, it's just it's awful. It's terrible. Oh. I agree with you. Yeah, that's, that's very true. But someone's obviously approved it, so. Everything has to be so efficient. Well, not efficient, but just... It's just... Uh, ugh. Why can't <laughs> it be more complicated? That was the good old days. Why can't it just be more artistic, more beautiful? <laughs> awful. I feel like we were born a thousand years too late. Yeah, Trowbridge could be a really nice looking place, but just it's a county town. I know it is. It's yeah, a but, but they just don't put any money into the town. Gosh, people, at all. people are going to know where you live. Oh no! Well, to be fair, people probably know anyway. You bumped well, into I, people before. Doesn't matter to me. I, you know. Uh, it, would, it would be a concern if there were people outside my house. <laughs> outside my door, that would be concerning. But if they know the town, and it's getting fa- it's fairly big now. It is uh, fairly big. I feel like it would be quite hard to find me. Well, but then if they bump into you in the town, then I suppose they could sort of follow you. Uh, yeah, but I'd, be, I, I'd yeah. be able to... I'd, I'd know that they were following me. I'd be like, hmm, there's somebody following me. <laughs> You, you. I feel like you would know because you, because it's something because it doesn't happen very often. I remember the face of someone who said, "Oh, I know who you are." <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh, like, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. And blah 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 blah. All of a sudden, that they're whistling whilst carrying a newspaper with eye holes cut out of it in the park, following <laughs> they're just, you. They're just not suspicious at all. Like, oh, just a man enjoying his newspaper. <laughs> Thank Mary's moustache, trench coat, <laughs> fedora. <laughs> Uh, and every time you look at him, he whoosh, faces the other way. <laughs> Just straight away. <laughs> <sighs> It'll happen one day and it's going to be funny. Uh, what would you do if someone actually like was following you and, they, and you thought they'd gone, but really they, they, they could still see you and they were right up, like they were like in your front garden looking through the window. I didn't realise be... you were opening the door and you opened it and bang, someone stood looking through the window. I would be very concerned. And that same it... person half an hour before had said, I know you, Oh, nice to meet you, can I get a photo it's, on that? It's not like I'd open the door and be like, oh God! I would start crying, <laughs> but it's that sort of like sinking feeling in your in your, in your your chest and it's like, oh my God, why is someone outside my house? <laughs> no, but I mean, you're faced with it. You've opened the door and, what the fuck? He's there, looking through the window, your kitchen window. So. I, I I jump at first. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I would go out of like, why are you here? <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> Can, Can I, I help, help you? you? And if he said, he goes, so hang on, I'll play. I will play the the guy who's obsessed with you, right? So you, <laughs> so you're in you're in B and Q because this has happened. You've bumped into someone in B and Q before, and they you were buying. So you can't remember it, but I remember you telling me. And you were buying like a chainsaw or something, and someone was like. Oh, a lawnmower. A lawn lawnmower. And you said, someone said, like, oh, I've seen your videos. You're George, aren't you? And sort of said, yeah, you know, nice to meet you and that. And that was it. But let's say, for example, you're in B&Q again and you're buying another lawnmower. Yes. And someone's done the exact yeah. same thing. Like, oh, you're George. A... You're George. I'm a fan of gentleman. Oh, nice I to meet you. I must be a rich man. Oh, yeah. Two lawnmowers. Woof. No, you know, yours is broke, so you're buying a new one. Oh. And you're sweating already because you're thinking about, fuck, there's going to be good three <laughs> figures. <laughs> this fellow's gone and said, Oh, I'm Steve. I'm, it's nice to meet you. I, you know, I'd love watching your videos. I said, yeah, great to meet you. And nice he sort nice. of gets, Oh, it's nice. You know, you have a photo or whatever, and then that's it. You drive home and you, you see, like, it's a bit weird because you know, like how a dog will dangle their face out the window. <laughs> you see someone who looks a lot like this fella, but with a plastic nose and plastic moustache and a pair of glasses on that aren't made for him on, with his face in the wind, right? Yeah. I think, that looks a lot like that Steve fella I just bumped yeah, into. As you said, yeah. you remember the face of someone who recognised you. Yeah. You're at home, and you go out. Uh, <laughs> you've been there a while, but you think, oh, better take Barney out for a shit. So you put his lead on and that. You open the front door, and he's there. I know how your house layout is. Your front door's there, and you're on, on the left of it is your window, your kitchen window. So right. you've, you've opened the front door. Out you go, Barney. You look to your right, and boom. He's there. Oh, oh, hi, George. It's, it's Steve. Stephen's back. Hello, Steve. <laughs> I, I, right, and now from this point, I'll be Stephen, right? And you're George. I just, uh, 
uh, uh, hello, Steve. Can um, I help hi. you? Hi, <laughs> I'm. Um, um, Minus the laughing, because I'd be very sick. I'm like, can oh, I help okay. you? Um, um, you are, this, is, this is where you live, George. Yes, it is. Now, fuck off. But, 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 I got, but I got a problem with my balls. My <laughs> balls. <laughs> I don't give a flying fuck, you creep. Get I, the fuck away from I, my house. I, I saw you being cute and it makes my balls it cheat my balls. <laughs> Why is it always balls with you? The, the hanging and dad. Balls. <laughs> it sounds like a constipated Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> Do the theme tune. <laughs> um... Oh, I've forgotten it now. <laughs> diddly diddly do. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I was just saying how long it is until you put get hands on. Right, I'm going to physically remove him from my property. <laughs> I I would eventually have like I, I if I was walked out with Barney, I'd be like Barney. I'd put Barney back in. And I'd be like, come on, fuck face. <laughs> I I'd probably use some much more horrible words, but I don't want to say them. But bear in mind that his hands are down his pants. I, I would I would probably get in- quite angry quite quickly because I'm like why the, why the fuck is this person outside my house <laughs> I get angry quite quickly I, I just wouldn't be able to help it I'm like oh for goodness <laughs> am I right in thinking that you've got a load of trees just opposite your house is that I right? do. yeah there's, there's, there's the, the little fe- the walkway, the little fence then the, the, the gully with all the fucking weeds in it and yeah. then the pavement and then the trees so like he's gone you think right that's dealt with but I got pissed off there I better <laughs> calm down sake. You calm down. You've picked up your missus. She's back home. You're having a nice night, and you, you've, you've had then you do your, your dinner because this all happened about two o'clock in the afternoon. You're oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we're off. talking now. We're talking about half six. You've just sort of had your tea. And you're ready to come on with me. I'm going to play some on the computer or whatever. You're doing the washing up, and then you noticed just a slight glint out by those trees. Someone's light because uh, there's houses at the other end side of those trees. Oh Someone's no, no, back. Backlight has come on, and like I see something glint. And I'm like, "What the oh, fuck yes. is that?" Yeah, we'll go with but that. Like at, but like at eye level, below where it should be, I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" And you see a, sh- a shape in the trees, and you see like the glint off of like what looks like a pair of binoculars. <laughs> I'm like, oh, for goodness' sake! And then you think you see that same plastic nose, glasses, <laughs> and <laughs> just, just, just poking out some leaves <laughs> <laughs> with like, a ah, suit on. I know who that is. I would call the police. <laughs> Uh, would, would you be going out at that point, or would it just be a straight-up phone call? I would call the police and then go outside. I'm like, why the fuck are you still here? But, George, you understand? My, my, my balls! balls. <laughs> they're, they're shriveling, George. My, my balls! <laughs> what all is... Uh... I've had a really bad day today, George. Could you just have a look at them? My <laughs> balls! <laughs> it's always balls. And then would that would that be just right? Would, would you would it be just going back in and just let the police deal with it? Or uh, I know, no, I keep an eye on him. <laughs> keep an eye on I, him. I'm not. I'm like, if I've called the police, I'm not letting that fucker get away. <laughs> and if you see the police come and he starts running, fucking go after him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do one of these a video, a theory. What happens if? What would happen? <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. That's what George would do if any of you out there have got issues with your balls and you follow him. And you try to you just sit outside my house all the time. <laughs> I love how that came from modern architecture. <laughs> Talking about balls. Someone who's got a problem with his balls outside my house. <laughs> Thank you.